Prime Minister, today is obviously an emotional day for you, where you were five years ago, where you are today. When you and I spoke a month ago, you believed Haiti was open for business. We talked about the Heineken Brewery and Digicel and the push for tourism. But now you're just a man on the street. So is there hope for Haiti? There is. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Uh, I believe there is always hope for, for Haiti, considering the context of where we were five years ago. We were under the rubble. It was Armageddon. It was almost like the end of the world. And today, when you look at the country and you look at all the efforts that have been, that have been made, when you look at the, the economic progress that the country has done, we came a long way. And if we came a long way, like we did from five years ago till today, I believe that we will overcome this latest political crisis and put the country back. Only if the traditional politicians put the country interest. But why do you think? Their well, own why, why do you truly think Haiti has come such a long way? I agree, the rubble is gone. But all of that foreign aid, for the most part, has been spent. You're not going to get new NGO money into Haiti. What's going to turn it around? I just don't see manufacturers saying this is a good time to come to Haiti, especially now that you, the man who is leading the pro-business initiative, are out of office. Well, of course, it's a challenging, it's a challenging moment. Um, and when you look at, for example, the, the situation in which the country was five years ago, and when you look at, for example, the situation in which we are today, we have, we have uh, you know, an economy that's growing, we have roads that are being built, we have a social assistance program, security is, uh, all the indicators really are, are, are green. Now, we have a huge challenge today, which is the political situation, but um, I, I truly believe that, that you know, I, I remain hopeful that uh, that the political the political class will find a solution along with the president to to put the country forward. But have conversations stopped? When we spoke in Haiti, you were devoting a huge amount of your time to courting foreign investors who could potentially start manufacturing in Haiti. What's happened to those conversations? Have they just stopped because you're no longer in that position? Well, we have. We have, we have a, a team of people, the, the, the discussions will remain because it was never about me as a single person and as the head of government. It was always about, you know, the interests of the, of Haiti, the interests of the country, the interests of 10 million people. And there's others that will continue the discussion. And I will definitely remain available and, and remain hopeful that those discussions will come. What we need is not handouts. Like you say, the NGO money has dried up. What we need is, is, uh, is solid foreign direct investment, local investment, investments to create jobs. And we've seen, for example, with the Caracol Industrial Park, we've seen 4,200 jobs created there. We've seen um, other jobs created throughout the country. So there is hope. There is hope for Haiti. We, we for too long, have seen that Haiti was, was going backwards. And, that, and there is a, a slight glimpse of hope and of light for Haiti today. But do so, you think Caracol... However, it, it will take the help of all, the but, help of the international community to stay the course and the investors to remain confident. You know, I was at, a, at Sean Penn's event and President Clinton spoke, uh, and he had some very encouraging and inspiring words uh, for all investors going to Haiti. He said for the next two months, uh, things will be more difficult. However, stay focused on the objective. Remain, stay the course, and don't give up on Haiti. And that's the message we're carrying forward today. If it's about inspiration, Mr. Lamont, where is the, what's going to inspire investors to put money into the country if they know that $9 billion, more or less, has been spent since the earthquake and there isn't much to show for it other than bringing Haiti back to the state it was in before the quake. I haven't been there. Stephanie was there. Uh, but I've heard her stories and I've seen uh, other images from the country. And while it's certainly better off, like you say, than it was during the quake, the question is whether it's any better off than it was before, after $9 billion. I believe there is no question that Haiti went through transformational changes. Um, the, the changes that have, that have occurred from, from uh, the quake till today are undeniable. Uh, the, you know, we have more, we have more kilometers of road paved today than we did before. We have, uh, we have uh, more 
you know, in terms of foreign direct investment, that grew from 2001 till today. It grew 6,000 percent. So it's undeniable the effort that has been done there. We we have right now the the security situation. We have a better police force. We have we have more police officers trained than we did before. The tourism were, uh, are, is up 20 percent. Um, and, and even the poverty, according to the to the latest World Bank numbers, has has been reduced. So, uh, the efforts are there. What we need, of course, we, we're going to go through, of course, uh, a political situation. Like like I said, uh, it is not, um, you know, it, it's 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 going to be challenging for the next 60 days or for the next two months. But, of course, when you look at the development of a country, and you look at the potential that Haiti has to offer, those opportunities will remain for the foreseeable years to come. We will get through that. Rough patch this political uh, crisis that we have today, but we have to look at the short, medium to long run and, and, and all that this country has suffered, the resilience of our people, and we got back on our feet quicker than everybody thought that we would. And of course, we need to stay that course for the benefit of the weakest in the society, for the benefits of those who need jobs and those who want to see the friends of Haiti who, who have always been by, by our side and want to see the country get forward. It is the do, the, the duties of all to put our political differences aside and work together for the better of Haiti. Prime Minister, I keep hearing you say, we, we, we. You had to step down from your position a month ago. If I were you, I'd be sitting having a drink in Miami saying, that's not my problem anymore. But clearly, you still sound very committed. Does that mean the next time we see your names in the headline, you will be running for president? Well, Stephanie, I love, I'm a Haitian, I'm a, I'm a regular citizen, I love my country. I put everything on the line for, for 31 months as Prime Minister and, and four months as Foreign Minister. Um, I feel that, you know, we, I contributed, you know, all that I've had for the country. And, I, and as a Haitian, uh, I don't need to be Prime Minister to love my country and to want to see the country go forward. So I consider that, that yes, it's a we. It's a we for all Haitians and all non-Haitians that love Haiti and, and, and want to see uh, the country uh, a better place. And this is, uh, this is how I approach it, that it's the duty of, of all.